I was going through a storage area and I came across this. Looks like a mid, early to mid 1960s Zenith roundy chassis. And I have absolutely no recollection of this. I, I don't know where it came from. Uh, I don't remember pulling this out of a set. I usually don't do that. And I usually don't pull tubes out of a chassis. Uh, so I'm, I don't know. Anyway, it looks like it's all here. And I thought this met, might make a fun resurrection. We got a jig, you know, and roundy is very simple. You know, these are your yoke connections, uh, CRT, and it all looks like it's here. It's a bit corroded from being stored in like a shed, but um, yeah, I have no, no recollection of this, and that's kind of odd the only tube that's left in there is the high voltage rectifier and there's no chassis number here so the first thing we would have to do is identify this and then go from there some of these had one transistor maybe that was the rectangular set I do not see a transistor socket here uh, most Zeniths had the controls, controls sticking out of the front of the chassis. These are on a separate little control thingy here, but it's all here. Of course, for the jig, we don't need the convergence. It's nice we have it because we can just leave it hooked up. Uh, big problem with these is the vertical output transformers fail. The flybacks are pretty reliable in these, except the components on this board. These boards like to become conductive and arc out, but that's easy to fix with a Dremel. Yeah, what, what about doing a resurrection on this? Clean it. Clean it up a little bit. Find the schematic for it. Get all the tubes in it. Um, go through and diagnose it and get it to work doesn't matter if it's in a cabinet or not it's a full color chassis someone be done some work on it in the past yeah no idea where this came from none at all I know nothing, unless I got it out of my friend's storage when he was cleaning it out to close it up. That's possible, because he liked to pull the tubes out of everything and separate them. I don't do that. I just store the whole chassis with the tubes in it. Sort of keeps the sockets from getting oxidized. You know, we have tube socket connection issues. Zenith used pretty good sockets. I don't know. First thing to do is clean it up and get it identified, I think. This uses the old shunt regulator. This doesn't use a pulse regulator. It's going to be like a 6DW4, 6JS6, 6U10. These are going to be the color, probably, what are these, 6ME8? One of these is going to be vertical, sink separator, and something else. 6GH8, 6KT8. I mean, I know these chassis fairly well. Let's see if we can identify this chassis. There's a, a whole bunch of these, and they it wasn't the common 25MC33 or whatever that seems to be everywhere. So we'll count the number of tubes. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Maybe I better do that again. Uh, oh, 24. So let's do that one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24. It's got a transistorini in it. Learn to count while working on vintage television. So 24, because a lot of these start with 25. We'll do this again. 2, 3, 4, 5. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four. Okay. So usually that's the first number. These are the yoke leads. This probably goes here. So am I missing a tube? I don't think there's a 24. I think they're all 20 chassis. Okay, can we get a number off of this? An S number. The flyback is a S65465. I'll write that down. The vertical output is a 952281. This sure does look clinky dinkler McMono boiler. This is choke filled with termite paste. Termite crystals. This is the audio output. Where's the audio output tube on this thing? It's this tube right here. So it's a 6, 6 z 10 Try and use the Thord Arson catalog to reverse engineer this. So there are a bunch of 24, 24 MC32 so we need to see, well, there's only, it's probably one of these right here. So let's look at 114. All right, flyback 114, S65465. That's the right flyback. Okay, vertical output right here is, uh, let's see, 114 is... The right, yeah, so it's one of these. 95-2281. So it's one of these. It's it's a number 114. I have a feeling it's this, because doesn't it have 32 on the top in ink? It's 24 MC32, MC42, NC31. We go to Sam's, there's two... 24 MC 32s. 24 MC 42 comes back to the same thing. The 24 NC is uh, a different SAMS, 803. SAMS 804. Let's see here. actually see what 
this look like and I know I know this is not as fun as working on a, the whole TV but it's pretty much electrically the same I mean you're restoring an old TV so you don't have the cabinet and whatever I hear the termites out here again geez I'm sick of those things so I guess this is sort of what it looked like assuming this is the right one I don't know if this is it because this shows a third IF tube as a 9 pin tube and I thought it was a 7 pin. Uh, I should have taken a picture before I came in here. Let me look back at the video and see. No, it is a 9 pin tube. Let me let me look at 803 just for the hell of it. Okay, this is the NC and I don't think this is it cuz look at this is a remote set and um the vh i don't think this has uhf what year is this 1965 it should right okay well this uses nine pin tubes for the first and second if which we definitely know this is not it okay, that was a late production 769 is the early production if i can get to it oh boy destroy it morgue monoboiler 1965 so here's the early production. I probably should photograph parts of this one too. Just because, 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 because. I've been looking at the difference between the early and late production. And this is an early production because it has a square uh, convergence assembly. The late production. Okay, this is a 24 MC32 early production. It has the square convergence assembly. The later production has this shape convergence. So you see the difference between that and that. So this is a 24 MC32 early production. Not that anything else is different, but I just want to have the right service data if we're going to resurrect this. So. Next, clean it, then find the tubes, then go through and diagnose and make working again. It's a zenith. I pulled out three boxes of tubes here. Uh, I'm going to go through and see if I can find these for the zenith chassis. I actually believe I found, I believe this is the bag of tubes that came out of it. And yeah, this came from a friend. This chassis came from a friend. But I'm going to go through, I believe this is my original box of tubes. That I used to, on large collection day, all the TVs out on the street in the late 80s, early 90s, I'd break the back in and pull the tubes out. This is my original, my very first original tube collection that I collected as a kid. And you can see a lot of these. This is a 6JS6 here. Horizontal output tube. A lot of these are, are, are just going to air. And... Um, that's why I'm trying to figure out how to, to uh, adapt the Soviet. Like this one, the getter is shrinking. You know, a lot of these are just going to air, these uh, American-made sweep tubes. So I think in 10 or 15 years, it's going to be hard to find. But I'm going to go through this box. This looks like all pulls out of Packard Bell sets. There's a lot of lot of desirable tubes in there. I think I found most of the tubes. A lot of these have corroded pins. I have one of those things to sandblast spark plugs. I gotta try and find it. And if you use that real lightly on these you can clean them up the pins and look like brand new. I'm going to clean this all up for the people that love clean things. It'll be clean. This device is for cleaning spark plugs. What you do is you stick the spark plug in the hole, push the button, and it sandblasts the spark plug. What I'm going to do is stick the tube in the hole and clean the pins. And what I've done is taped them because that thing will blow a hole right through the bottom of the tube. This does a pretty good job of cleaning the pins. 
It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. I tell you this, this is how it's supposed to be used, but it works real good on vacuum tube pins. Six and nine pin tubes. I'm gonna go through and test all these tubes. Six, six BZ6, number one. I'm not, I don't know if I'm gonna show every one of them. This one is kinda dead. I might need to find another one. All the tubes are repopulated. I love the signatures on the Zenith chassis. I'm gonna go through and test the electrolytics with an ESR meter real quick. And what I should have done is I should have powered this up through a dim bulb before I populated the tubes to reform the capacitors. So I kind of screwed up there. I, uh, I'll show you the top in a second. I, this, this I don't like, but for right now I'm going to... Now the ESR meter will not tell us if capacitors are shorted or need to be reformed. They'll just say if they're open or not. I'm just going to go through and do a quick and dirty check. Uh, take a look at this here. There's two right here. One of them's obviously been replaced, but we got a four section here and a two or three section here. I'm going to just test the four sections. Just watch how this one tests. First section, second section, that's pretty bad unless it's really low value. Third section, uh, let's see. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me start over. First section, second section, third section, fourth section. Okay, that that looks so. That looks like a 70-year-old electrolytic capacitor. Okay, here's the other one. So these are these are tired. These are real tired. So even this one here, this blue one, is measuring there. Now look at this. If I go over to this, these, I wonder what's going on with this. But look at how this, look at how this one tests right here. Almost like something is shorted here. Everything here, all of these tests like they're shorted. Even this thing right here. Really? It's that good? Well, I'm suspicious of these capacitors, these electrolytics. We're gonna, this is going to be interesting to wake this up and see what it does. I need to do one of the rectangular ones because they're way more complicated. This is actually pretty damn minimal. You got a 20X1 these a 20X1 Z36 or 1C36. This is like twice as many parts in it. It's power up time for the Zenith chassis 24 MC32 and we're going to plug it into the jig here. This is the jig with the bad uh, red heater to cathode short but that doesn't matter um, check out these tube shields I found those are lead the top portion of that is lead that's a lead jacketed tube shield they're heavy I'm just missing one tube shield here uh, I was trying to find my 6P45S uh, Soviet tube because it's way heavy duty. This is a 6P44. This is like a 6GB5. Uh, but it's okay. We can sacrifice this because the 6JS6 is... Uh, uh, you, can buy, you can buy these for about 50 cents a piece from Ukraine right now. The, 6, the 6JS6 is about a $50 tube for a new one thanks to the CB Linear crowd. I wonder I wonder what the output signal out of a CB linear that's using sharp cutoff sweep tubes looks like. Is it is it like a sawtooth or a square wave? What what what's that look like? I can't see a clean sine wave coming out of uh, 
a bunch of sharp cut off sweep tubes and an RF amp, but what do I know? Anyway, before I even hook the jig up, let's power this up and see if there's any shorts because those capacitors were real suspicious. So I'm going to dim bulb this thing. Well, to start off with, we have nothing. And so I started looking at the power switch and then I started looking at this right here. See how that says blue? I wonder if that's plugged on to the wrong spot. Because that says AC and then that says blue. I don't know, that looks like that's been on there a long time. I don't think anyone moved that. I got a brand new pack of Chino Special Clip Leads here. What's this? Wait, wait, wait. What's this say? Oh, packaging designed in the USA. Any little stupid thing. And, and then they they show the thing, these little ass clip leads running a 5 amp uh, tail light. Yeah, right. Um, any little thing to get an American flag on it. Just so the... So anyway, the first thing you have to do whenever you get these is test them. Because a lot of them will be open right from the factory. Oh, okay, this should be on right now. What's going on here? Um, either the first clip lead is open or we have a, another problem here. Maybe I need to, maybe this got pulled. There we go. Oh boy. So now let's go back and see if the TV powers up. All right, so let's plug this back on, this nasty, sticky, degrading plastic. And then let's see now if we get a light bulb. Yes, now we get a light bulb. And it looks pretty damn bright. I'm going to pull some of the tubes, uh, especially these higher current ones. And see if the the brightness comes down at all. Which it is. Every one I pull out, it's getting a little bit dimmer. Okay. See, that's what I said. I should have I should have done this initially with and I can see they're starting to glow. Okay, good. Alright. That one actually took quite a bit of current. How about this one here? Yeah, we're getting dimmer. All right, I'm going to let it sit for a minute and see what the capacitors do. But yeah, they're starting to glow. It does not appear we have a shorted capacitor problem at all or any kind of short on the secondary. Because um, the dim bulb is pretty damn dim. Uh, so I'm going to repopulate the tubes and we'll start powering it up. So a roundy is pretty simple. It has one yoke adapter because on round tube color sets, the yoke plugs are just these connectors, these what spade connectors, these flat blade connectors. So we just have one adapter and there are components, matching components in the head of this, resistors and capacitors. And then you have this lovely contraption to get from the roundy style CRT plug to the more modern uh, color. The next thing we want to do is kill the screens or G2. We do have a normal service switch. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm considering leaving the CRT unplugged and measuring the voltages here before I connect it. But it is a, uh, the CRT is damaged, so I think we'll just go for it. Only other thing I need before we give it full power is a cathode or a plate current meter in the horizontal output. I want to monitor the plate current. You should do that on any old tube TV you're starting up. It's one of the biggest problems I see. You need to measure, you need to monitor the current, the power flowing through the horizontal output tube anytime you start an old TV up. It's just, you shouldn't even do it without monitoring that power. Don't even plug it in. 
it's like as important as changing capacitors. One disclaimer, when you see me do this, I, I usually do it from the plate. There's an adapter you can do it from the cathode at the bottom. It's kind of like you can measure the power going in or the power coming out. And it's a lot safer to do it with the adapter from the bottom. Um, there are really high voltage pulses here, like 6,000 volt AC pulses. It's not a lot of current, but if you touch it, it will burn you. It will punch a hole in you. It will burn your skin. You will smell yourself burning, and it will hurt when it heals. If if these wires touch any of your test equipment, you can t kiss that test equipment goodbye. I do it from here because I'm using a standalone meter. Uh, I'm pretty reckless and I understand the stuff and I very rarely ever get bit by it. I very rarely ever get shocked. So, yeah, just... Just a little disclaimer there. I see these guys that do All-American 5 radios. They have like just, just all these channels doing All-American 5 radios. Like we don't have enough of those out there already. Um, AI is going to pull from those and just be an absolute expert on on, on repairing 5-tube radios as, as, as AM dies. It's just brilliant. But anyway, uh, I, I hate disclaimers, but I'm just taking a minute saying, you touch this, you will smell yourself burning. Um, it will hurt. So I'm going to go to a 500 watt bulb. I have no current draw here yet. I'm going to go to a 500 watt photo flood. I do want to have some protection, I, you know. So this will just, yeah, well, this is the thin skin version. So there we go. Nothing. Silence. I'm going to fondle the circuit breaker here. A lot of times the circuit breaker just does the B plus. It does not do the filaments. I need something. Just like working on a regular TV in a cabinet. Just like resurrecting a regular TV in a cabinet. No difference. The only difference is, is it's sitting up here where we can work on it together. Like we're good friends. So obviously it appears we have no B+. Plus because the lamp is dim. It's not even really, I mean it's warm. The lamp is dim and we have no current flowing through the tube. And it's just quiet. So all we have here is filaments. So I'm suspicious of this. These go bad. Now this is interesting. So it comes out of the transformer. There's the circuit breaker. And it looks like if it has degaussing, the thermistor uh, is 
I guess, on the back of the picture tube. So if this set has degaussing and it's not plugged in, then we would have the same symptom as if the circuit breaker was open. So we gotta we gotta look at this right here. Right here. We can just jump that if that's the case. See the power would flow up over through the thermistor and and back down. So I wonder where I wonder where that would be. Well, one side of it goes directly to the transformer. The other side comes over to this point where it says blue on top. And then it it goes somewhere else. There's two wires. So I'm just going to bypass it with a clip lead here. It's just easier to bypass the circuit breaker. And we'll see what happens. Um, because... It's just easier that way. Rather than hunt for this elusive connection for the uh, degaussing circuit, which it looks like it's going to be the deg... It looks like, yeah, I'm going to have to prop this thing up and get down on my hands and knees and follow it. Okay, it ends up at this point right here below that diode. Uh, I bet those two need to be jumped together. Let me follow the brown one on the left. Alright, so it comes to here. Ah, D and L. And those do look cleaner. So, what do you want to bet? So we'll just jump this. Now, now I got the jumper off the circuit breaker. So is everything still hooked up? Let's see what happens here. I didn't pull this chassis out of uh, the set, or else you you would have seen that when you took it out. So. Kind of making it up as I go along here. Oh, oh, there we go. The light bulb is... Oh, there the oscillator started. See that swinging? Oh. That's an interesting sound. Oh. Oh. I wonder if that's just because we're on a light bulb. I'm going to bypass the light bulb. Ooh. That is a real... I don't think I've ever seen that before. Now this tube was a little bit weak. That's why I put a question mark on it. And that's the horizontal... Or the vertical multi-vibrator. And that sucker is getting hot. This is adjusting the vertical hold. Vertical size, color level, tone. Oh, 
that's a very interesting symptom. This is the one that was in there. Know how, notice how the glass is like smoked? Let's try this one. This one's clear. See the difference there? It's not that apparent, but this is the horizontal oscillator. Uh, you know, Zenith is a lot, Zenith color sets are a lot like RCA. They sort of have the same tubes in the same place. I haven't worked on nearly enough of them like I have RCA, but I need to start because Zenith is just cool. Well, let's see what it does with the different 6BA11. It's running consistently. Yep, that fixed it. That tube was dead. There we go. Very good. see. Uh, that's green. Where's blue? Let's go to full power here. It's weird. It's kind of changing colors on me, but I guess that's to be expected. Um... There's some high voltage arcing. I hear it too. Vertical speed. It's not the tube. Because if I turn the speed all the way up on this tube, it starts doing the same thing. Probably got a leaky capacitor there. Let me try the output. Yeah, I, I, it's not, it's not the two. Well, it's definitely better with this 6BA11, but it's going to be something in the circuit. But anyway, I think that's good enough to where we can test and see if the rest of the set's working. I don't hear any hiss from the speaker or anything. This, this tube is warm. This tube is cold. It's totally cold. This tube is warm. It's glowing though. But it's still cold, like it's not getting any plate voltage. That one's hot. That one's cold. So we got a, de a, a dead second IF stage. Actually, yeah, I think it's the socket, because there it goes. And yeah, now we got very blurry static. Well, there's no audio. Yeah, that's a sizzler right there, man. That sucker is hot. Um, I'm going to yank that. Are we red plating the audio output? Okay, let's make dangerous here. And see if I can adjust the focus. Because the focus is like really, really bad. Does this not have a slot in it? Okay. Okay, don't try this at home, kids. This is... There we go. Boy, is that sharp. It's one thing about Zenith, man. It sure seems like it's easy to get your... But why is it all over the place? 
it, well, the sharpness is all over the place. And the cathode plate current's really creeping up. I mean, that right there is hitting that little tube awfully damn hard. <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah, so what's going on here? Something in the flyback cage? Um, I wonder if I'm getting x-rayed right now. There's supposed to be a shield around this high-voltage regulator tube. So I think the um, the pot, the focus pot is bad. Either that, that red board is becoming conductive like it does on a lot of these. And this plate current just keeps creeping up. I mean, that's starting to get... I, I, I pulled the high voltage down a little bit, but that's starting to get up. That's real getting up real hot for this set. So let's get a signal on it and, and kind of see where it is, and then we can try and figure out. But there's definitely vertical and horizontal issues here. This is what I get when I put a signal to it. horrible. That's color bars. <laughs> well, I can't quite tell. That looks like the vertical. Looks like the vertical's locked, but the horizontal's not locked. There's no horizontal lock at all. That is really wild. Um, let me play, let me see if the color will come in. I don't think it will. Why am I, why am I pulled down so low on my high voltage? All right, let me play with this. This is horrible. Well, this is horrific. This thing is made, it, a lot of problems. Vertical won't continue running. There's no color. The horizontal plate current is, cathode current is way too high. Um, I guess we just try and solve these problems one at a time. I don't know. Maybe the first thing I'll do is I'll put, I'll get, I'll put the right horizontal output tube in it. Let me get a 6JS6. I found the giant one for the, 6JS6, 6P45, and I found a 6JS6. I wonder what percentage of that guy's income he spends on those pillows, advertising those pillows. Because maybe he could like pay his employees some more and cut back on the advertising, you know, streamline the business. Anyway, I'm not supposed to ask, ask, ask questions like that. I'm just supposed to go, yes, I will buy your new pillow 3.25C, since this is a 6JS6C. So let's see what our plate current is with this. I don't think that little tiny, uh, yeah, I don't think that little itty bitty tiny tube is supposed to be run at these high currents. I mean, let's look at the difference. Although the elements inside are not that much smaller, are they? Anyway. 
But we still got the vertical issue. The dzz, 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 dzz. That is a trip. Boy, this is definitely a slow warmer, isn't it? The issue I'm working on right now is why is this current so high? I don't believe this has a uh, tuning coil. That's too much. Yeah, that's like soft red plating for that tube. That's way too much. So your cathode current is 225 so the plate current should be 225 minus 14 so yeah like 210 something like that so that's way too high that's why I'm saying you gotta really measure this and I almost think that's the first thing that should be addressed because uh, if the flyback is bad well I went to the 6P45 because it's a honking tube. It can, it, I think it can cruise along and handle this all day long. I mean, yeah, it's just barely warm at that current. But that's not right for the rest of the system, and that's not right. Um, so there's a problem there, and I'm wondering if it's a yoke issue. I'm wondering if the impedance, there's a small impedance mismatch between the jig and the set. I think I need to find a zenith round yoke and try that. Because... I believe I have one here somewhere, I just don't know where. Needs help. Needs a lot of help. Well, I didn't have the camera, but something shorted. And it might have been my fault. Might have been I was playing with the tuner. I think I blew the, the fuse for the filaments. Crap. Yeah, that must have been me moving the tuner around. See this? This is the fuse for the filaments. It's just a piece of wire. Just twist that back together for now. Okay, crisis averted there. Uh, what I was doing when I blew that fuse is I was tweaking the fine tuning on the tuner. And yeah, we do have some color information there. I don't know if you can see the red, but if I turn the chroma off, see how it goes away? The chroma on the generator. So there is some color making it through this mess of non-working crap. Actually, I'm getting closer. If I could just get the horizontal to lock. I'm having a I'm starting to think that maybe this issue is the jig. Maybe this thing doesn't like these really long wires. Because I unplugged the yoke and plugged it back in and it stopped doing that start stop thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm starting to, like, get there, you know? But this is concerning. That is, what is going on there? But I wonder if that's, all of these problems could be the jig. All of them. I believe this is an actual uh, zenith roundy yoke with this this fishing lines on it what's the model here it is nine five dash two three eight two that's a zenith part number right i've turned the brightness all the way down on this and i plugged in the zenith yoke 
And I want to see if our cathode current or plate current is any different. You can see here's some flashes of light on the turn this off. Uh, and it certainly looks like we have more high voltage. The high voltage is a lot higher. Uh, and our current looks lower. Let's see, we just have a, a line there. But this certainly looks like it's generating, it's running more efficiently with the right yoke. Um, we're almost at 25 kilovolts here. Well, it might not like the jig. The jig might not be a a, a good match. That's still high though. Yeah, the current is still way too high, but man, it's produced seems like it's producing a hell of a lot more high voltage here. If I open it up, I mean, yeah. So let's go back to the other yoke. Well, when I do that, it starts driving all that current through the shunt tube, and look at that sucker red plate. See that? Well, I crank the high voltage up, so... Getting no likey. Yeah, I went back to the... I went back to the... Uh, yoke inside the jig, and the high voltage came down uh, 10 kilovolts. Doesn't this set this set does not like does not like the uh, does not like look at that man that's that's like even even worse though it's like driving even more through the, it changed the circuit tuning look at that that's interesting. One yoke, one yoke drives more uh, high voltage, and the other yoke drives more high voltage into the shunt regulator. It's just a different tuning. Well, maybe it's better if I just leave the shunt regulator all the way open. That's, that's weird. I'm trying to figure that out. The yoke in the jig drives more high voltage, more power into the shunt regulator. The factory yoke drives more high voltage into the CRT. Explain that. Lick finger. Hmm, sizzle pony. Um... It doesn't like the jig yoke. I mean, it'll it, it's okay for testing, but we should really be down around my brown mark there. That's that concerns me. I don't like running high plate current. It makes everything hot. Uh, the color, you know, you notice it's getting better as it runs. And that's just adjusting the horizontal hold, getting the color to lock in. But it, it's interesting to me, uh, maybe it's a phase detector diode. Sure seem to have a lot of those lately. But it's getting better. You know, maybe the damn thing just needs to dry out. Uh, it was sitting in a very damp environment for many, many years. If I, the flyback is hot right now. If I put my ear up against that grill, I can hear like a sizz, not a sizzling, but almost like it's not high voltage. It's like water boiling out of the flyback and I can smell it too. 
so interesting. You know, those flybacks, that donut is all paper. This, if this is the flyback, so what this is, is this right here is a stack of paper and windings. And it's very possible that that gets wet as these things sit. That, water, that paper absorbs, absorbs moisture and you got to dry it out. I just powered it back up again and I swear the more it runs, and I know that the yoke is out of tune for this thing, but the more it runs, the better it gets. I mean, look at it now. Look at where we started, and then look at it now. The more it runs, the more the plate current drops, and the higher the high voltage gets. I mean, I'm... There's something to this. Because I haven't changed any parts or done anything on this. I mean, you're, you're watching it. I'm not turning the camera off and then adjusting something. I'm just letting it run, get hot, and then I'm shutting it off. So I think there is something to this, this moisture in the transformer paper. So I'm going to let it run for a little bit longer here. I'm trying to get this flyback hot. And then what I'll do is... Um, Maybe I'll try putting an efficiency coil in this and see if I can adjust it. Because I wanted to use this chassis on the jig just as an experiment. Dug up a 6Z10 because I think the one in here is shorted in a, an efficiency coil. I have a box of these. So I might put this in and see if we can adjust this thing to be more efficient with the jig. This might just be, be me talking out my ass again, but it seems like Zenith eats up tubes a lot more than RCA. Especially the 6KT8s. They seem to just drive the living hell out of those things. Um, punish them. One thing about these is they take a long time to warm up. There's a big, big, big cathode in there. Let's see if we get some audio now. Didn't. Now we got no vertical. Okay, what's going on here? No vertical and the sound is dead. Okay, I just wiggled the two brown and the vertical came back. But why am I not getting any sound out of this? <laughs> Hear those tubes heating up. Well, the high voltage is a lot lower again. What the hell is and it's, but I didn't, no, it's, so check it out. I turned it off for about 10 minutes. I went and I picked up the efficiency coil, dug that out, dug the, the, the audio output tube out. Look at the cathode current now, or look at the plate current now, and look at the high voltage. So when I started it up, all of a sudden, this tube was getting red. What the hell is changing? That, that's good. Is it literally just I'm baking the moisture out of the flyback? Really? Well, somebody already replaced the phase detector diode with these two diodes, and I don't know what those are. I'm going to check them. But uh, if they're germanium, like one in 60, I don't think those would survive. Well, the bottom one's good. Uh, half a volt one direction. The top one is shorted. So, yeah, you got to use, I mean, today, at least I don't think there's something bypassing it. There might be, I might need to check that. Let's see how many ohms, six ohms. Uh, today, we take for granted, we have one in 916, one in 4148, 
all kinds of high speed shot key diodes for switching mode power supplies. You know, back in the 60s, they didn't have those diodes. I mean, they're everywhere today. Out of circuit, it's shorted. So yeah, that explains the bad horizontal lock. We have two new diodes, one in 4148. And I put the efficiency coil in there. If it works, I'll show you where I put it in the circuit. Maybe it works too well. Maybe not. Uh, let me reset the horizontal lock. There we go. There we go. Now the horizontal lock will be stable. Let me see if adjusting this coil does anything. Stick it up in there and then turn it. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh. Seems like it wants less because I've got the coil almost all the way out so maybe what I need to do let me play with this maybe I need to take the coil I put it in series without all of a sudden the sound just came in and then something popped and the sound went away there's something shorting over here but I'm still playing with the cathode tuning I mean yeah the high voltage tuning this is the sound problem right here on the back of the volume control. These pins are all shorted together. Yeah. Let me move these apart. Well, now it seems better if I bypass the coil. It seems better. So maybe the shorted diode was screwing up the waveform. I don't know. But I touched this right here and burned a hole in myself, like I warned against doing. So I need to take this out. Because what I should have done is I should have replaced these, then checked it, and then installed this. I took the coil out and put it back to factory. Let's see what the cathode current is now, or plate current, or whatever you want to call it. Well, it's <laughs> almost too low now. So inquiring minds need to know, was that phase that was that shorted phase detector diode causing the uh, plate current to go up? Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna just well, and yes, the pins on the volume control were shorted together. So now we have working volume. But I'm just going to take and bypass that diode. Let's just take and jumper it here. It was the top one was shorted. And it does cause that to jump up. So let's dial it in. No, it didn't. So what did I do that caused the plate current to come down? Is it literally just the flyback drying out? This is the kind of stuff that will drive you crazy. Let's go back to the correct tube. Maybe the issue was I killed the other tube. It was getting weak from being beat down so hard. No, well, it doesn't look like it. So what, what did I do that caused that to come down so much? I mean, it was up, it was clear up here. 
These are the color demodulator tubes. One of them is bad because if I switch them, see I get all reds and purples, I'll switch them. If I switch them, I get greens. So yeah, one of the two of those is bad. And then the, the uh, focus pot is bad. I tried changing these color demodulator tubes around 6ME8. And they're actually supposed to be something different, 6JM8 or something. And I replaced them with different ones and it didn't make any difference. I'm still missing the purpley cyan. This bouncy thing is a trip too. This kind of wall, 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 wall. Is a line voltage doing that? Because it's summer and... All the people in the city are running those 1500 watt air conditioners with the pipe that goes out the window. Is that what this is about? Are we at low line voltage? Also, this is very mysterious to me too, how the plate cathode current on the horizontal output tube came way down. I still don't really have enough high voltage. This thing should easily kick out 25K with the regulator turned all the way down, and it's not. Well, we know what that is. That's the yoke. Soldiers, now please, listen to me, please. You've made one of the most heroic marches in history. Yeah. You deserve to go back to your own homeland and stay there in peace. Not a good picture. I'm sure that the people of this country will understand and will agree when they hear the facts. Now, will you take the gamble? The people... Who that is such a trip. And now the plate current is starting to creep back up. You know, Zeniths, Zeniths, Zeniths have a reputation. They either work perfect or they're very hard to fix. And I think this is going to be the very hard to fix. It's probably why this chassis was given to me. They probably gave up on it. Yeah, that focus pot's killing it, too. So, what's with the bouncing, stopping and starting in the vertical? Bad capacitor, but why is it so intermittent? Why does the cathode current start to run away as it gets hot? We know the focus pot is screwed up. Uh, I don't know if I can squirt some stuff in it. I don't even know if that would be a good idea to squirt cleaner in a 10 meg pot that's uh, got 5,000 volts on it. So we still got issues here. Pick up the phone and call the that's what arcing looks like. Look at that. Which will provide you important, never seen before facts. Uh, and I sprayed that know. pot, which really didn't improve the pot, but it got... Yeah, that pot needs to be changed. What a trip. You can also receive a copy of our new report for 2023, Protection in the Risk Zone. Be sure to ask Ooh, Protection in the Risk Zone. Oh, I was sort of doing a little bit of visual inspection after I took a break, and I noticed this down here. What's going on here? What is this capacitor for? Maybe I should uh, test these two capacitors. Let me go get my cap tester. But this one's not even soldered in. I don't know what it's for, but it looks important. This is a thousand volt. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I need it. I think, I think I need a cigarette. Thousand volt at 0 0.1. <clears throat> and there's no leakage here. Get that off of there. No leakage, and it's right at 0.1. So this capacitor is good. Look at that. A full eye opening. So no problem with that capacitor. I know that's one of those undesirables, but I don't know why it was cut out of circuit. 
I'll have to take a look. I'm going to remove this other white one down here and check it. This is the capacitor that was disconnected, the big white one right there. Uh, it could very well have been causing the vertical trouble because it's the 810 volt boost is filtered by that before it goes to the vertical size. So we need to test this again and see if that fixed the vertical issue. That could definitely cause an issue. Well, it looks like it made it worse. Okay, well, it stabilized when I got the signal connected to it, and all of this uh, noise is because I forgot to hook the ground, the jig ground up. Watch this. See that? Damn, listen to this horizontal output tube. It's singing. Okay, so the sound has gone clinky dinkler. Man, this thing is problematic. The bouncing is a the bouncing is a trip. I've never seen a TV do this before. It's it's like you're that's a trip. Ignore the digital TV crap. There you go. Look at that. Whenever it changes brightness, it bounces. I mean, we are getting better here. Uh, the capacitor stopped it from collapsing, but the bouncing is still there. And the blurriness from the bad focus pot. But yeah, the, the bouncing is a trip. It, it bounces like a car without shocks that hits a bump. It, it, it's not just one bounce, it's like bu -bu 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 -bu. It's like a bobblehead type thing. I went back to the other 6BV11, the original one that was the, the, the d one with the dark envelope, and it's stable now, but it's still bouncing. I wonder, wonder if it, the reason why it's bouncing is, is the high voltage bouncing, is the boost voltage bouncing? The boost off the flyback, is that what's bouncing? How do we how do we monitor that? I gotta think about this. So this green wire is just clipped on to that capacitor that was cut. So watch this. If I just so much as touch that this, it it causes that. Yeah, so if I do that, it and now the meter is not very good, but if I do that, it bounces, but not a lot. Um, someone else was chasing this problem. That's why that capacitor was cut out. Well, here's another issue. That right there is supposed to be a 0 .01 at 1 kilovolt. Connected to the 2 meg. And here it is, a 0.1 at 600 volt. 
So point one, right? Yeah, point one. Point one. So it's ten off by a factor of ten. Yeah. This is a two meg five percent, and I think that's low. What's five percent of two million? The answer is one hundred thousand. So, yeah, it's one point nine would be the lowest it could go. So it's it's low. So, yeah, we got the wrong parts in here. This is where the this is where the boost goes to uh, the vertical, and this baked out 100k has gone up to 153k minimum because it's not even out of circuit. A lot of problems here. Well, it turns out that is a point one, but it's a point one at one kilovolt. This is the point oh one up here. Um, but the resistors are way off. That's confirmed. And this this is lossy. So I need to get the right capacitor for there, the right resistors. I need to clean this mess up. And um, I don't know if that's going to fix it. I kind of doubt it. I can't picture a resistor, you know, being causing the thing to bounce like that. That's that's just off a little bit. So I'm checking the integrator, and I've done a whole video covering these. They go bad, and that's an 87.5. See, it's 87 and green. 87 dot green, which is 87.5. This one over here is an 87 dot yellow, which is 87.4. And that's supposed to be 268K resistors um, in series. And it's a little bit off. So it's 70 and 70, 140. It's a little bit high. We might want to change that too. I'm sorry, it would be 247Ks. So it is way off. It should be should be under 100K, and it's measuring 300. So I'm reading through this because these books always are very helpful, and check this out. Vertical bounce or roll. The vertical hold control rotated. The picture stretches at top and compresses at the bottom. Picture will try and roll vertically, bouncing up and down like a rubber ball. De defective vertical integrator. Now... This is not, I don't see this stretching or uh, losing sync very much, but it is bouncing up and down like a rubber ball. And then there was another note, and somebody had, somebody had circled that. Someone wrote all kinds of notes on this. Vertical integrator makes vertical... Blink from straight line to full picture number 87. I bet that's the whole problem is that stupid integrator. Well, I'll make one of those. That's super easy. It's three 680 picofarads and two 47 uh, resistors, 47K resistors. All these resistors are bad on the back of this uh, flyback board. The 20 or 1.18 meg, I'm sorry, brown, gray, blue, are measuring like 28. The pot is completely open. Uh, the 2.2 is measuring like 2.5. I guess that's not too bad. Now that pot is not really available cheap. Uh, what I'm thinking about doing is putting a bunch of 1 meg resistors in series, like 10 1 meg resistors in series, and then just finding the tap that f that works the best. I think I'm going to have to replace those 218s also, because they're way off. I'm playing with the focus voltage. I want to see how critical it is. And it's a very narrow window. Uh, you know, it's bouncing around there because the pot's bad, but basically it's, um, you can see that little bit of change. 
It's like 200 volts, two, 250 volts. 250 volt window is the difference between sharp and kind of soft. So I was going to do 10 1 meg resistors, but that's going to be too coarse because that'll be 100 volt steps. So I could do 2470s. Okay, I'm doing a bunch of testing here with resistors because I'm probably going to end up going with uh, a bunch of fixed resistors and a tap instead of that um, pot because high voltage there's 1000 volts drop across that one meg pot and so I think I've just about, about got it with the two 1.8 megs and 10 1 megs it should give me almost exactly uh, perfect 100 volt steps which will be great. Here's something I don't think I've ever covered before. Here's your learning part of the video. Resistors have a voltage rating. See this? High voltage metal glazed leaded resistors. And this usually wouldn't matter, but when you're using them in the high voltage cage for focus and they have, you know, 2,000 volts drop across them, you have to make sure that they are rated to withstand that. These, the operating voltage of these ones I'm buying, the VR68, which is a one watt resistor, a 10,000 volts. Now I did the calculations, there's less than a about a hundredth of a watt I think flowing through there so yeah you have to that's why I'm special ordering these and they're about 75 cents a piece Ooh, China but when you're doing high voltage stuff the voltage rating of your resistors has to be specked out see here's just a standard 25 cent resistor voltage rating on these are 350 500 volts so those are not going to be good you know inside inside the high voltage cage where you have a huge drop all right back a week later i'm getting everything set back up i ordered all the resistors from digikey and that was uh last saturday night and a week later they're still not here and I paid for three-day shipping, so I don't know. It seems like they're slowing down. So I went ahead and made the uh, integrator. And I've covered these before. They're real easy to make. And I'm getting all set back up, and it's not working. And what's going on is it's overdriving the CRT and pulling the high voltage down. So we've got dark screen, no raster. Brightness has no effect. Our cathode current's there, and our high voltage is low. And if I unplug the CRT, the high voltage comes up. Now, if I flip it to, um, what do you call it? If I flip it to service, and then flip it back, you can see then it's just really overdriving the CRT. Look at that. It's hitting the cathode so high, it's just killing... The high voltage. So what do we have? Cathodes that are too low? Let me start checking voltages. I'm going to unplug the CRT while we do this because I don't want to damage it. So this is checking what grid number one, pin 6, 12, and 2. They're all about 180 volts. That's not that far off. Let's check 4, 13, and 5, which on Zenith, this is real nice. They're real easy to get to. So, well, that doesn't look too bad. That's not too far off. But am I in service? I am in service. Ooh. They should be 260. See, if, they're, if it's too low, it just turns the CRT on. So why is that so low? What happens if we pull this video tube out? Ooh, there it goes. 
So the video tube's pulling it low, but why? Is it a bad tube? Did the tube go bad just sitting over the weekend? So this voltage is controlled by, they come over here to the video. This is probably something I did underneath. So when it's in, cert, when it's in setup, It goes through this, it has to go through this 4,700 ohm. Right? When it's in normal, it's getting it from the video amp. Alright, brightness controls pin 2 of the video tube, which is supposed to be 1.5 volts it's measuring 17 and that makes sense because why is the cathode the cathode is supposed to be 3.5 volts it's measuring 16 so this tube is turned on way too hard which is causing it to pull the plate low which is causing it to turn the CRT on too hot. that's why the thing is getting red hot but why did one of these wires to the brightness break? Let me check that. Well, that was the wrong schematic. That was the late version. This is the early version. So it biases the brightness, biases this cathode follower. And it's working. But somehow the voltage is getting in from somewhere else and keeping this high. I feel like this has to be a problem I induced. Okay, it is a problem I induced. Uh, I know exactly what happened. When I set everything back up and I went to jumper the two leads where the degaussing connects, I accidentally connected it here for a split second and it popped these two diodes. See, there's two little diodes there. They are these two diodes right here. Uh, the blanking gate. Oh, man, why did I do that? Oh, what a mistake. I blew these two blanking gates out. They connect. Uh, if you follow this, they come up here and they connect to the, uh, they connect to this point right here. This 1500 ohm. So, they're not regulating this voltage that's why it's run away it's so high because the diode's gone oh man about to drop an f-bomb i'm going to just use a couple of these 1 in 41 it's the same thing i used for the uh ratio detector i'm sorry phase detector horizontal phase detector this is my fault. I screwed up. I slipped with the uh, wire. You know, this happens when you're working on stuff. It, it just, you're moving things around. Uh, it happens. So, you, you always got to sort of blame yourself when a, new a problem, when a new problem occurs. I'm having trouble talking today. Man, I should run for president. Damn. Now, these are silicon diodes. The ones that were in there were probably germanium being they were from the 60s and i caused that resistor to go way out of spec that's supposed to be 1500 ohms heating it up with the iron it that's a 1500 uh five percent it's not 1725 so i don't know man i i flubbed a boner here i really screwed up we'll see if these silicon diodes work or if the 0. 0.6 volts versus 0. 0.2 you know, blanking diodes, I don't know if they're just handling the blanking pulse or if they need to be RF diodes for video. I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of aggravated, you know. I just, it happens, though. Okay, 1.4 volts with the brightness all the way down. That seems a little bit better. All right, now our cathode, CRT cathode, is 305 volts with the brightness down. As I turn the brightness up. It goes to 250. That seems better. All right, CRT is plugged back in. Let's turn the brightness up here and see if we get proper control now that 
I found out that I hooked the detector diodes up to line voltage. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Hope I didn't damage the CRT. So let's change let's change the integrator now which is this is my replacement as you saw on the schematic and the one that's in there is that little thing right there that looks like a disk capacitor so I'm going to install mine let's see if it stabilizes this vertical oh it's going to oh there it goes yeah, there's the new homemade integrator installed. Uh, let's see. Okay. All right. Looks solid as a rock now. Uh, let me try adjusting the vertical hold. Oh. Uh, no, it really shouldn't do that. No, it's still not a hundred percent. Crap. Oh, that is the weak tube, though. That is. So maybe when we get the rest of the resistors in there, it'll improve that. But I kind of doubt it. It shouldn't. It shouldn't cycle like that. And also, we got retrace lines now. Oh boy! Not fixed. The integrator did not do it. What the hell? Now the integrator is measuring. Did I change the wrong one? I certainly did. And this one's measuring perfect because 4 is 233k ohm resistors. 5 is 247k ohm resistors. There's 5 right there. I should not be working on a TV right now. I, I should not. I should walk away from this. I am r literally on the short bus right now. So this is 5, which is green dot. This is 4, which is yellow dot. And I screwed up. That's 4 is the input. It's the sync input. And so I got it installed there. And yeah, this one is measuring uh, 300K. And it should be measuring 247s in series, so, I don't know, 90-something. Brain not working now. And it's, you know, you make a mistake. I've been making mistakes, whatever. But when you heat these things up, you cause these old resistors to drift. So you really don't want to heat these resistors up unless you have to. Well, now the vertical isn't running at all. So, crap. I can hear it. It didn't start. Well, I might have had this thing bent over and touching something because I, I moved it and then I plugged it back in and it's working. So let's see how stable it is now. I don't have retrace. Do I have retrace lines? Let's see. Okay, I'm going to turn the vertical hold. No? I still don't think it should do that when you turn the vertical hold. I'm going to let it run for a minute and see if it starts its cycling thing. I'm trying some different 6BA11s and it's still, when I turn the horizontal, I mean when I turn the vertical hold, it still stalls like that. I don't think it should do that. Um... So it's not the tube, it must be something else under the chassis. And I don't know what all I did to this, but look at this. I lost sound too. The hell, it's almost, did I blow the delay line out? It's 
It's like it's all all chroma. I don't know what I did to this thing. Zenith can be very hard to fix, and this is but it looks like it did fix the bouncing. Uh, the vertical looks stable now with the new integrator, but the rest of it's trash. All right, well, we're getting better here. Um, the color killer adjustment is what was causing the, the color to be so difficult. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't know what happened to the audio, but it's still like overdriven or something. Is that a focus issue? See how it says remembering Tony Bennett? Or is that a video issue? Did I screw something up when I put 110 volts? But you can see it's getting much better. Yeah, we're definitely getting better. Uh, I've been spraying the controls. That's the tent. It looks a lot crappier in the camera than it actually looks to me. Of course, it's going to be a perpetual heat wave. That's how we bring the climate lockdowns in. Got to have the climate emergency. Got to have the carbon reduction. Got to cut 50% of your consumption. Let me try that again. They want you to cut 50% of your consumption by 2030. See, I can't tell if the blurriness is the bad focus resistor or something else. See, that's screwing with the focus. It does look a little like the video is a little bit off, too. See, I don't know how much of that smearing is due to the long wires of the jig uh, and focus. The focus actually looks decent right now, but it's a bit smeared. That's got everything adjusted pretty well. The fine tuning. Uh, yeah, it's not real great, is it? Remember I was telling you you could use a neon lamp to check for high voltage? Look at this. I don't know. Damn near. In metric, a decimeter away. Ten centimeters. Look at that. That's just from the high voltage coming off the plate of that tube through the glass. Color TV is a powerful thing. I take a look at the audio output and see why we went quiet. And I notice when I power it up, I'm going to power it up, it, it has audio for a second and then it dies. Listen, probably won't do it this time. almost like a bad tube but let's check the voltages on the 6j or 6z10 okay pin 9 should be 210 it's measuring 298 is the audio output not conducting let's see what 2 is 2 should be uh, 215 it's measuring 298 3 should be uh, 6.5 it's measuring 26 that connects to the buzz control or no it doesn't connects to 180 ohm this is some interesting numbers you know, something here
going on here? So the problem here is the cathode wire is open, and that's why all the voltages are high. So that's the cathode voltage, watch. But I can't see where it's broken. It like runs up, up underneath here. Well, here's the problem with the sound. I, I traced it down, and that wire, the cathode wire comes to right here. It's not even soldered. See that? It's another part of this hack work. Well, I just... I just totally, oh, I just done shut it up all the way. That's a 180 ohm resistor it's supposed to be. And I'm going to solder that wire on there that was just kind of wrapped around. That was causing the sound not to work. And right now that resistor is measuring 195 ohms. Let's see what it is after I solder it. All right, it moved up to 198 ohms, so it increased. The heat causes these things to change permanently. Quick, but we don't have enough. Uh, hopefully, we'll get more in the future. Mine clearing equipment is part of the new 1.3 billion dollar. Yeah, the focus is way off right now. I got to get those resistors, but we're getting it. We're getting it slowly, one step at a time. My brain wasn't really functioning on full. Investigation has ruled out pilot error or maintenance problems for the deadly crash of the Marine B-22 Osprey last year. The report concluded the Marines were doing routine flight operations when a Gonna take a break from it for a while and we'll come back to it later. After I get the rest of the resistors. Back to the treacherous Zenith chassis. I plugged it in and was checking a couple things. I changed uh, that resistor right there, the 1.5K, the 5% that was way out of spec. And I plugged it in and I was waiting for the high voltage to come up and then something shorted and it made a loud grunt and then smoke came out. And I'm trying to see where the smoke came out of. It came from somewhere right here um, yeah ah, this thing's a pain in the ass too much water you know that's the problem everything's just soaked with water in this thing yeah but why why and then smoke came out right here and it stank see if i disconnect this it's not being overloaded and it's not the high voltage rectifier but yeah that's runaway let's try a different tube it's more likely something i caused though i mean just moving the thing around this these chassis are really delicate. And I can't find the resistor that smoked. I mean, like, it, it was vol violent, vile. This tube is weak. That's okay. I'm going to give it a few minutes and see what happens. Interesting. That tube went up, and now the, the current's dropping. It went up, and it started to show something. The hell is going on here? The freaking current's dropping. I'm going back to the 6P45, the gigantic Soviet horizontal output tube, this beast. See what happens. These warm up real slow. But what smoked? Nope, 
it's running away and no high voltage so what the hell happened here there's a resistor that blew up right there see how bulged it is so what does that do that's soldered on the bottom of the horizontal output tube and why would that blow up like that? Brown, green, red. Isn't that the same as this one over here that I changed? It sure is. Brown, green, red. Maybe it got jealous. I don't know. All right, that resistor that smoked is that one right there, that 15K. It's not 1.5, it's 15. It's just so burnt you can't tell it's an orange. Um, why would that smoke? It's, it's measuring 12 ohms right now, which that's what happens when you smoke it. And the thing should probably actually work okay with that pin grounded. So something else is wrong, causing it to drive a hell of a fat ass signal through that resistor. Hmm, something else is wrong in the circuit. Maybe we should put the scope on uh, here and look at the peak to peak. 240 volt, pin 5. Well, it's not a problem there. Wow, look at that. What the hell is that? the hell what the hell is going on there wait a second it looks like this came disconnected but why would that affect more of these bodged solder jobs why would that why would that cause it to do that all right let's see what happens here Oh, now I hear the vertical oscillator running. All right. We're getting better here. Um, I think as it dries out. And look at how much the plate current has come down since we started. Remember it was up at 240. So that that was another uh, that was my fault. Again that was my fault. I also changed the damper to a double. Let me change back to the other damper. The cathode current seems a lot lower with this damper. But yeah we're, get, we're getting there. The green is pretty bad. Yeah that horizontal output tube was weak and now it's really much weaker listen to it squeal it's singing it's a singing horizontal output tube Oh yeah, now it's really going. <laughs> Listen to it squeal and it's arcing inside. Jeez. It's like loud. Low plate current, low high voltage, dim picture. Your doctor about twice yearly Lectio. Lower, longer Lectio. Hmm. Serena, call my insurance company. More call deadly medications. Serena, call insurance company. When you are in an accident, call Jacoby and Myers. Serena, are you sure? Positive. Contact Jacoby and Myers. The call is Serena. Consultation is free. 
and they don't take any money unless they win your case. Call Jacoby and Myers. Thanks, Serena. Glad I can help. Jacoby and Myers is always the best answer. Jacoby and Myers, because everyone deserves justice. Are you oh, yes. on your way? Yep, coming. I'm just kind of kicking back, letting it run. I know the focus is twacked, but that, that horizontal output tube is shorting internally and squealing, and, you know, I'm just letting it get hot and burn all the moisture out of it, sort of enjoying the pretty orange lights. So when I was growing up, 60 Minutes was cutting edge, like investigative journalism. Like they would, they would go after people, and they would actually re report characters. Yeah, I mean, when I was growing up, it was like real investigative journalism. I mean, 60 Minutes would do stuff on Sunday night that would stir things up and dominate the news, and get politicians and business people and stuff in trouble Monday morning. Now it's just like all human interest woke crap. I mean, it's not, it's more of just stories. It's not really like what I think of journalism as, like going out and getting a story or confronting a situation. I don't know. It's weird. Anyway. Oh, we got, uh, we got to hear about some side effects here. Here we go. Let's listen to the side effects. Digital TV, man. Oh, a toilet paper advertisement. Nothing but the finest. My side effects. Amazon has great deals on everything kids need. Instead of spending more, he spent less. Anyway, I've been running it. Um, just having fun. I don't know. It's kind of cool, you know. Sitting here getting microwaved and radiated with x rays from this thing. Back to our Zenith 24MC32. I found the Zenith service manual here, which will help out. And I keep getting pulled off this project with other ones, but we're going to get to the bottom of this. I just wanted to take a quick look at why the video quality is so bad on it. And the bandwidth is bad, and I unplugged the tuner, and I'm going right into the IF there with the 
45.75 megahertz. And it's just such a bad, bad response. The video response is just so bad. And I understand the focus is kind of crappy and all of that, but if you look at this. I, I mean, it's literally just trash. That should be your uh, IF response right there. I mean, there is no IF response. I mean, unless the focus is just so bad that... I mean, when I turn these on and off, they're not even in the right spot. This should be on the left of the screen. And that one's not even doing anything. Why that one causes it to... Let's go directly into the video. Just totally bypass the IF. Well, it's sort of the same garbage going straight into the video. So, uh, what do we have? An open peaking coil here or something? I don't remember it being this bad. Oh, this is kind of weird. I unplugged it and I plugged it back in and it came up and it was working and then it lost it. And keep in mind, I'm going directly into the video. This is one problematic chassis. And it didn't do it that time. Came up once and it had a decent, decent picture with the multiverse pattern. If I feed video in to where the detector comes out I get this garbage if I feed it in one step after this after the delay line I don't have sync but I don't have the garbage well I see part of but not all of the problem inside the adapter socket there are two 270 picofarad capacitors that are uh, in parallel with the yoke which is stretching the picture and dropping the high voltage so I tried going around this and it improves it but it's still stretched about an inch too much I want to play with the color demodulation issue with this chassis uh, I don't really think it's going to do what I wanted to do because I can't get the horizontal deflection down as you can see, the blue over here is completely extended off the screen. And over there, the white is off the screen. So I, I can't seem to get it to pull in. It's just an impedance mismatch between the, uh, what, 90 degree CRT here versus a 70 degree roundy and the roundy yoke versus the rectangular yoke. But let's do a quick alignment on this demodulation transformer. I've never done this on a Zenith before and this is just kind of a learning experience anyway. I had originally had six ME8 uh, beam demodulation tubes in here which the later Zeniths used. I got the right, I believe these are six JU8 correction, six JH8. So 6JH8 was replaced later by 6ME8, and the tubes look totally different on the inside, and it made no difference in the color demodulation. Now, this transformer, this demod transformer here, if I turn this just a little bit, I think I'm turning the wrong thing. That was brilliant. I think it's this one. Now watch this. So I noticed that the bottom slug in this transformer is not threading. It's just free floating in there. So if you touch it, it just moves around. So I think what I need to do is put a piece of dental floss in there and then we'll align it. So I need to try and get that slug out of the bottom. Hopefully I can get it out of the bottom then we'll 
run a piece of floss in there and get it to tighten up. This is what I mean. Um, which, what's horrible about this is I'm probably going to end up breaking this thing. Well, this is interesting. The bottom slug is brass, and the top slug is ferrite. Brass, I believe brass will detune. Brass detunes negative, and ferrite tunes positive. I, I don't know if I'm explaining that right, but they counter each other, and that that's why the instructions will make sense. Well, this is where having the actual like Zenith factory service manual comes in handy. So you ground these two points, and then you adjust this to stop the barber pulling rainbow, which is, is about right, because they're... So you adjust that to stop the barber pulling rainbow, except you can not barber pull. Well, that's sort of an interesting image. Okay, I got everything grounded here in the instructions. Now I'm going to adjust the top slug, which was the ferrite, to maximize, and the bottom one to minimize. So let's let's see here. Maximize the top, minimize the bottom. Let's see. Let's try and get this lighting a little better maximize it says hold on a second it says you want the slug on the outside of the coil not the inside Oh, there's multiple peaks there. Boy, that is a touchy ass adjustment. But what happened there? What happened? What happened? It just died. Well, I moved the dial around on the meter. Okay. Okay, let me... Let's go to 20 volts here. Man, that is a touchy adjustment. I mean, you're talking about a tenth of a turn. Jeez, or less. Okay, now I'm in the bottom here, and I believe, I, the way I understand this, you want to adjust the bottom for minimum. Which... Please don't break, please. I'm backing it out because it wants it on the... Oh, come on, baby. Okay, I... please don't break. Okay, I'm running it in now. Because you want it on the outside of the coil. Boy, that is one touchy-ass adjustment. So then I go back and readjust the top one, and I guess I want to adjust the top one for minimum also. I'm not quite sure I understand how this system works. Well, I, I don't know what that did. That seemed to just make it a lot worse. Wow. It's bad. Okay, connect to 
point R, adjust the burst amplifier plate coil for pattern in 15A, which is that pattern there. Uh, it doesn't look the same to me. So I'm going to adjust this. I don't know if I'm turning the right thing. It doesn't make any, it's not making any difference, which scares me, stand by. All right, I'm turning the wrong thing. Hope I didn't jack that up. I don't know what I was turning there. This is the right thing. up with this you got to keep moving the trigger on this I don't know why it doesn't like to trigger on this weird I mean that looks the closest on there with red on the sides and then green in the middle but man why is blue so bright Damn thing still ain't working right. Look at that. This is just odd, and I know the camera really doesn't want to show it, but I have beautiful color bars here. Look at the green, and then I can bring it all the way over to red over here, which it's not showing. Um, which maybe I'm a little bit, but it will not display, it will not reproduce the NTSC color bars. That's as good as I can get. It's so bizarre. Doing that color alignment really brought the color in. I was just watching some actual TV and the color looks great. Deep greens, deep reds. It's really good. Good flesh tones. But uh, we'll take a look at the news here in a minute in the hurricane. Um, originally I had wanted to restore this chassis and I was going to replace that pot is bad. I was going to replace that with 10 10 meg resistors in series and then sort of use just do a tapping method to get the proper focus. But I don't think I'm going to go any further with this if anybody's even made it this far into the video. I had ordered the pr appropriate high voltage resistors, the Vichet VR series. Uh, these are good to a fairly high voltage. Uh, it was a lot. It was several kilovolts and um, they the Vichet VR series are the high voltage resistors you need to use in things like the focus circuit or electrostatic deflection sets but I don't think I'm going to go any further with this because well if I get a roundy cabinet with, where I can have the appropriate yoke I might do it but this was just a good experiment it was a great time waster it wasted more time than just about anything you know zenith is notorious for being either just working or being impossible to fix so i hope you learned something from this video i think we covered the integrator circuit again which i actually ordered the parts for the integrator in in this order from digikey which I did. Here are the 47K resistors from the Czech Republic. Vichet. And uh, here are Vichet from China. The ceramic 680 picofarad 1 kilovolt capacitors. But we already redid the integrator. But we saw this thing also just had all the resistors that were way off value in this set. So there's nothing I can do about that. Um, I'm not going to go any further with it. We resurrected it. And we'll just watch some TV on it and move on to the next thing. I got I got a ton of cool stuff to work on. It's infinite. I just The next 50 years I could do videos working on cool stuff. Also, this thing was touching... The horizontal output tube and caused the horizontal output tube to crack and melted a hole in that so that's got a date with the silicone Hillary. Well, we begin with Alex Cheney and the AccuWeather forecast. And Alex, it's good to see Hillary losing strength. Everyone pretty much wondering what it's going to look like when it gets here. Always it's good to see Hillary losing strength. Most of the people in this area have never 
experienced a hurricane, uh, and it's going to be a tropical storm once it gets here, uh, but this is going to be just incredible to see it play out over the next couple of days. Uh, so right now, here is Hurricane Hillary. It has weakened to a Category 2 storm, but still the winds around this really well-developed eye wall just there, uh, the winds at about 110 miles an hour. So incredibly strong winds, and this system will continue to head north. I'll have more on that path coming up here in just a little bit. Uh, Live it off with 7,000 HD, what is happening right now? There's some showers, some really light stuff coming down out towards the Colorado River. And of course, you add all this instability to the atmosphere. A lot so this morning it was out towards the Salton Sea, and now this afternoon out towards Bakersfield, making its way uh, into the Central Valley for California. Uh, there is a flood watch. Uh, it got posted a few days ago. I think many people thought it started right It's then. too bright uh, in it here. At 4 p.m. tomorrow on Sunday, so about 24 hours from now. Uh, several spots you're going to be expecting at least about two inches of rain. So this could be an incredible movement of some rain for everybody, and also unprecedented, the first ever tropical storm warning in Southern California from Santa Barbara all the way into the Palm Springs area. And we're already seeing a little bit of some clouds starting to trickle in. This is the Angeles National Forest. It's currently about 86 degrees in Palmdale and also looking very ominous out towards Riverside right now at about 80 degrees. Okay, guys, so still to come in the seven-day forecast. I'm going to break down Hillary, what you can expect hour by hour as we head through Monday. This is going to be an incredible event, and we'll keep you safe. We'll get through this together coming up. Okay, Alex, we'll look forward to that update. Thank you. It is all hands on deck across Southern California as people prepare for Hurricane Hillary. Here's a live look at Catalina Island where officials are asking everyone to leave today. Eyewitness News reporter Eric Resendiz has the latest. Emergency crews like the California National Guard mobilizing across Southern California. I hope that island doesn't, that casino with the pipe organ in it on Catalina, that would be such a tragedy if that got wiped out. Yes, shelter in place. You know, these people, these officials, they've done nothing. They've absolutely done nothing. They've never unrolled an extension cord or used a chainsaw. They've done nothing. They've never filled a sandbag. They're, they're completely worthless, incompetent people, and they're our leaders. Turning out to pick up those free sandbags to protect their homes from flooding. As we come back here live, again, residents all across the LA area are being advised to pay close attention to oh, all yes. the weather. Oh, yes, be so afraid. As that storm approaches, once again, the goal here is to keep everyone safe. Yes, no one knows just exactly yes, safe and effective. When that tropical storm makes landfall. Yes, reporting live in Pasadena, Amy Powell. Amy Powell. Tracking Hillary. Need to use that as the thumbnail for this. On your screen right now, you can pause our broadcast if you have to to make sure you don't miss it. To download the ABC7 Los Angeles app for the latest storm updates. Tracking Hillary. You can also stream all of our newscasts for free on your phone, even if you lose power. Well, for now, it's all wow, that damn day. shunt People tube is really hot. Yeah, Look at that. Talking about the weather. The Rams are set to take on the Las Vegas Raiders in week two of the preseason. Rob Fugazaki, California. Oh, yes, FEMA. Yes, come in and take my property. Just take everything I have, Mr. FEMA man. Sell it to the highest bidder. Make it a big investment opportunity. Oh, officials. Yes. Worthless officials. Oh, yes. Step in, Mr. Government. Visit listoscalifornia.org. You can find information on how to prepare there 
and multiple languages. Oh, yes. Many events have already been canceled around Southern California tomorrow because of the impending storm. One of them is Ciclovia. The event was supposed to kick off tomorrow at 9 a.m., connecting Koreatown to Hollywood. Big loss the there. The event has gone and shelter in place as the storm comes in. Officials! It's going to start to hit late this evening with the brunt of the storm being um, on Sunday. In situations like this... Another official. Trees concern us, power lines concern us. Uh, and Never even pushed a lawnmower. Or jump-started a car, but he's an official. He's an official nothing. Oh, here's another one. Yes, just stay home. Just do what us officials tell you because we're official. Oh, there's another official. For the storm, the state is pre positioning high water rescue teams across Southern California to assist local communities. So, once again, as we come back here live to the emergency operations center, once again, officials are keeping up officials. On the conditions. They have a lot of resources. Yes, pay attention to your officials. And they also are urging citizens to stay on top of what's going on, pay attention to the weather forecasts and updates because this storm is getting closer. Oh, yes. Pasadena, Amy Powell. ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Amy, thank you. Stay with Eyewitness News as we continue to track... See, all we're back to this again. It's just around and around and around and around. Officials. Oh, 